It is true that the public feel sometimes befuddled that they are facing masses of contradictory information. We see that over things like climate change. You see this over elements of science or, you know, every Daily Mail issue, probably, you will find something that will cause confusion and befuddlement. Uh, at the same time, interestingly, people say that brands that they trust and use as signifiers to choose things are actually more important to them than ever. And news brands that people trust are proving to be more important than ever, and we might hear a bit about that from the panel. But in terms of overall trust, the bottom line, very quickly, is that we cannot find a single global crisis of trust. Uh, if we look at things like whether you trust other people, um, this is Britain, uh, this is France. The French are generally miserable about most things. Um, and there are some interesting, there are sort of cultural differences around the world. There are the Netherlands, uh, there's Germany. Uh, there's Spain, uh, and obviously massive uh, rise in unemployment and a really heavy uh, recession and scandals of various sorts. Here are the lovely Swedes. So generally, we can't see that it's sort of collapsing. And in, in, in many cases, actually, people are more likely to trust each other, particularly in Britain. And in the rest of the world, what do we see? There are the Brazilians versus the Australians. So again, Latin countries versus more Anglo-Saxon. Again, no pattern of going back to the 1980s of any massive decline. There's the Chinese. Uh, again, this is uh, not just Chinese in cities, this is the overall Chinese society from the World Value Study. Something bad has happened in India, but uh, you know, the patterns are not clear. There are the Russians, um, not you know, phlegmatic, not massively down. Um, uh, and here's South Africa, uh, 23, 26, much the same as 30, 30 plus years ago. Um, it is true, and I think this is what we sometimes conflate, that trust in big institutions is often low all over the world, and governments don't come out well. We've looked at, uh, for this report, overall levels of trustworthiness uh, in different uh, types of organizations. And governments globally, this is global data I'm showing you now, as you can see, come out bottom, with 34% describing them as very untrustworthy. And in the monthly study that we do about what worries the world, What's happened since the recession in 2008 has been that concern about unemployment globally has come down and down. But interestingly now, one perennial is corruption. Political and financial corruption is now, some months, is the top concern in the world. So tech companies actually come out quite well. And for those of you in public sector, uh, the public services don't do too badly. Uh, from the oil companies present in the room not doing so well, and the media generally coming in for some criticism. So there's not, but there's a lot of people just where, where, where people are sort of sitting on the fence and can't choose whether to describe them as trustworthy or not. Um, if we go on, I think the key point when we look at the trends, though, is although trust has declined since the 1950s and 60s, it's not new. So this is America, and we were wondering whether we'd see some massive shift in American society uh, this had led to um, the, you know, Donald Trump becoming president. This is trust in government. This is trust uh, in believing that most people can be trusted. Again, we're not seeing any sort of massive shift. But of course, I'm doing something naughty with the axes here. I'm not showing you the trend data. So let's look at the trend data. And this is why you're able to say that trust has fallen. There's the same data going back to 1958 in one case and 1972 in another case. So what we can see is that it is lower than the 1960s, the 1970s, um, but most people can be trusted, hasn't really changed much recently. And the decline in trust in government is, I mean, one question is actually whether many of us would want to live in 1950s America. Um, because, you know, it might be that in the Cold War, uh, you have to trust your government, etc. But anyway. The other thing is that uh, people do trust scientists. We've looked at trust in professions or trustworthiness of professions around the world. Uh, and so what we find is that globally, uh, whereas doctors are revered in this country, doctors and nurses, globally, it's scientists. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, politicians generally are bottom. Um, advertising executives not doing too well and bankers not too well either. But lots of experts, doctors, teachers, scientists, law and order, um, not, doing, not doing so badly. Uh, the trends in Britain, what we've been tracking every year since 1983, of course, show, if anything, rising trust in doctors, rising trust in teachers, rising trust in professors, uh, scientists, uh, the police, 
Uh, only the clergy really seeing a major fall, and you know, whereas they were actually number one very briefly when I was um, 18, but not anymore. Uh, and then we've got the civil servants in the room, of course, who do brilliantly. Every year I send this to the um, cabinet secretary and say it can't get any better, and it seems to keep going up. Um, there are the trade union officials, not as uh, devilish as they were in the early 80s. Here are bankers. Look, we trust bankers more than we used to. And uh, journalists in the room, again, pulling away from politicians. I haven't bothered showing you politicians because they're exactly where they were in 1983, at the bottom. But they haven't got any worse. They're just not trusted. Uh, trust in business. Maybe it's that we can see that big business, people, you know, these people who evade their taxes, pay themselves enormous salaries to spoil the third world or the developing world, um, you know, we're going to hate them. Well, um, it varies around the world, but overall it doesn't show a sort of universal downward trend. Uh, Chinese trusting business more. Indians seeing some rise uh, since 1999. The Japanese up a bit. America recovering slightly. Germany a bit negative. Um, when we ask people who work in these organisations on our reputation council, we interview people every year who are running public affairs functions in some of the largest companies in the world. They disagree that trust in companies at an all-time low. Now, maybe we, they would say that, wouldn't they? They work for them. But I thought one of, one of the remarks was interesting. They think that actually in emerging markets, trust in companies can be greater than government because government doesn't actually exist locally. And it's true that for some work that we do in Africa, the only way to get things to certain places is to use Coke's distribution network because there is no government distribution network that works in the same way. The only one who can actually make a change is the company. So again, business doesn't seem to be sort of being massively beaten up. And actually, if you look at trust in small businesses in America, again, it doesn't seem to be falling. And trust in big business is pretty similar, frankly, to where it was in 1973. We've never been particularly big fans of big business, but we haven't suddenly come to hate it. So I think what, what we're trying to do with this is just look at all the trends that we can find and say, is there a crisis of trust? Um, or actually, are we, you know, we, do we need a bit more perspective? doesn't mean there isn't a problem, but perhaps it's not an acute new crisis. And one of the things that then I then sort of thought about, well, you know, it's interesting that uh, at Davos every year or in various other forums, the elite in rooms like this, the elite sit around worrying about the crisis of trust and um, everybody wanting to get at them. And, of course, they're, they're probably right to do so because people are cross. Um, so traditional parties and politicians don't care about people like me. Uh, South Africa, 78%. Mexico, 76%. France, uh, 75%. Uh, Great Britain, 69%. America, 67%. And, you know, if you believe that the system is broken, if you believe that, do you believe that the system is rigged in favour of the rich and powerful? Uh, almost everywhere in the world, people will, will say that that is the case. The lowest figure is in Sweden, and even in lovely, peaceful Sweden, a majority say that the system there is rigged for the rich and powerful. And with, uh, you know, falls in real wages, with more um, of the share of of the economy going to people who own things rather than work, uh, you might say that we can understand that. Um, it's certainly true that Brexit is making people cross in Britain. And while we haven't so far seen a decline in the, in the low proportion who trust politicians, what we have seen is a rise in the proportion of people who say the system of government here needs a great deal of improvement. In the monthly survey that we do in Britain, we've had for the first time in the top 10 issues that people in this country spontaneously come up with just saying, I hate all politicians, they're all useless. Uh, but in some ways, we are going through a pretty extraordinary period here. So you might expect uh, something like that to happen. And there has been uh, a, a decline in the proportion of people who say that they trust the government to put the needs of the nation first. But is it a collapse or an acute crisis in the last few years? Uh, on that measure, perhaps not. But we are cross about government. When we look at the track record of different governments and overall satisfaction with them, you know, generally they start off and they're, they're sort of, we're optimistic about them, and then we get cross with them. Sometimes they recover a bit around election times, but generally the trajectory is downwards. All political careers end in failure. You can guarantee it. Uh, and there is no clear pattern that we're getting crosser and angrier and angrier with our governments. Somebody as popular as Tony Blair will one day arrive, um, probably not in my lifetime, but they will arrive again, I can guarantee it. Um, it is true that our trust in the internet has fallen. This is some trend data in Europe. 
Uh, and you can see that back in 2006, people were saying, yes, I trust uh, the you know, stuff I read on the internet. Now, people have gradually wised up to the fact that uh, the internet might not be a perfect uh, news source. And interestingly, for those of you representing print media in the room, trust in the written press, in contrast, has been rising. We have record circulations, of course, for papers like the Financial Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the BBC, despite a bad press, is still one of the most trusted news sources in Britain. But there is polarisation. And then the question is, if there is, how unhealthy is that? How, how bad is polarisation? So this is America, and you can see very clearly what has happened there. Um, the Democrats, who are very unfavourable to the Republicans, have more than doubled between 1994 to 2017. And Republicans, who are very unfavourable about the Democrats, again, has more than doubled. Both parties have, have hate or dislike each other more, or are more, what did we say, unfavourable to each other um, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Um, and it's true that there's a lot of evidence of what we call partisan motivated reasoning. So here in this example, my colleagues uh, have said, do you support the repeal of the 1975 Public Affairs Act? Now, this is a piece of legislation that does not exist, but the public are always willing to ask que answer questions <laughs> when we put them to. So when we tell them that Donald Trump has suggested repealing this, 39% of the Republicans support the idea of repealing this non-existent legislation, as do indeed interestingly, to 12% of, uh, Trump, uh, of uh, Democrats. Um, if you say the Republicans generally um, support it, the Republicans are a bit more likely to support it. If you say the people want to repeal it, uh, a bit more likely. And if you say the Democrats want to repeal it, suddenly the Republicans become less enthusiastic. And if you say Hillary Clinton, uh, she of um, terrible behavior compared to Donald Trump, of course, suddenly the Democrats like it and the Republicans don't like it at all. Uh, and we can see similar effects if you ask about banning gun, gu the effects of guns and a whole range of other issues. So it's certainly there. We looked at it in Britain in the last um, few decades. So this is looking at how much Labour supporters um, like or dislike Michael Howard or David Cameron, uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. May, uh, and how much Conservative supporters dislike Tony Blair, um, uh, Gordon Brown, uh, Mr. Corbyn. And as you can see, they do seem to have become a bit more negative, although I must go back to my colleagues and just before we, when we, before we finish this argument, we'll go and look at the data for Mrs. Thatcher and just see what came out there. But overall, you could argue that we have become, certainly since the turn of the century, a little bit more polarised. But the question about this is how dangerous divisions are. And the global data on this uh, suggests that although 32% of people say that you know, di people di political difference is so divisive it's dangerous for society, we've got as many people who say actually differences in political views um, exist, but they're actually healthy for society. So we have sort of quite mixed views about divisions. Are they just a normal part of democracy? Which, by the way, despite all its discontents, is still the system of government that in every country on earth where, we ask the, where we're able to ask the question, so we don't ask it in China, but in every country on earth where we're able to ask it, it is always chosen as the best system of government. Um, and what about the idea that, you know, basically if you're a Brexiteer, Remainers just don't, don't care about the future of the country or vice versa? Um, and again, globally, we can see people are divided about that. So there are, there are a proportion of people who think that their opponents simply are so bad they don't care at all about the future of the country, they're entirely partisan. But quite a lot of people disagree with the prospect of that. Trust is an issue in the digital economy, of course. And what we looked at was whether this was new. And the answer is no. So we went back to 1991. Are you worried about the collection of your personal data? Well, it's gone up by two percentage points in the European Union, despite Cambridge Analytica, mass data, big data, artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what about the misuse of personal data? Identical, um, as far as we can see, not really shifting. We've always been worried about it. And of course, very few of us relative to this level of anxiety ever do anything to change our passwords or make ourselves more secure. What about what people say on the line? Well, one of the things we've found is that while people don't necessarily trust their government, they do often trust randoms that they see online. They trust product reviews. Um, we've got 69% who say if it gets a lot of good reviews, they'll try it. It's, now, it has fallen a bit, so maybe people are wising up 
to fake reviews. It's down from 76% to 69%. And we know now that people are, are, are suspicious of perfect scores. So um, if Tim is trying to sell his new book and he, he wants to look at the ratings, what he doesn't want is everybody to say five out of five because people will start to get suspicious. The perfect score we found um, is 4.4. <laughs> um, and that means that that's obviously a balanced view. So and that's what we've got to... That's what, if, you, if you're going to flog something online, authors, go for 4.4, not 5. So in all of this, then, we, when we looked at this and then spent quite a lot of time trying to look at what are we actually talking about with trust, we found, we found that really we need to be a bit more systematic. Uh, it's not a very sexy thing to say that it's a bit more complicated than at first sight. It's not, it's not so easy to put into headlines, but that is the fact. Trust matters sometimes. Uh, it doesn't matter always. For those of you in product innovation, trust might not matter very much at all. Uh, and what we can do, though, we think, is be much more systematic. And after reviewing all of the evidence, we've sort of, you know, we first of all need to acknowledge that some of this is about us ourselves. Are we willing to be vulnerable and optimistic enough to trust somebody? It's not just about the behaviour of other people. We have to, in turn, be willing to trust people. Um, then, of course, when we do actually make that decision, there's an element of rationality to, about it, but there is also an element of emotion, and there always will be. You can never be, if, you, if there was complete certainty that was something was going to happen, in a sense, you wouldn't need any trust at all. Uh, then, of course, the people we, are going, we, we want to judge as trustworthy have to be competent and reliable. And this is a key challenge for some of the organisations in the room, because you are extremely competent and reliable, if you're a bank, for example, most banks are seen as competent and reliable, but unfortunately you're just not necessarily on our side, or at least as we see it. You're going to flog us something like pe you know, personal protection, payment protection, or something else uh, that we perhaps don't really need. Um, so we are also need to believe that you have our best interests at heart, that you've got a history of good behaviour, and you might share our values. And then, of course, it's about trust to do what? I absolutely trust Ryanair not to crash because they're highly regulated. Do I trust Tony O'Leary to give me a beautiful experience? No, but I trust him not to crash. So again, it depends what we're talking about. And in looking at this, we tried out eight different drivers that might be key to trustworthiness. And we were hoping when we did this to find the killer few things that we could all focus on. So we looked at how reliable people are. We looked at whether they were basically competent. We looked at their responsibility, whether they were transparent and open about what they were doing. We looked at leadership, which frequently comes up as an issue. Um, we looked at whether it's actually well-intentioned, even if it's not brilliant. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it trying to do the right thing? Is it like me? Does it share my values? And um, would it actually try and rip me off if, if, if it knew I, it could? So we looked at all of those, and we were hoping in the analysis that some of them would come out as the key, uh, the key factors. Unfortunately, all of them turned out to have an impact on overall levels of trust. Uh, and, and there are differences by sector, which are covered in the report, and more data is available for anybody who wants it. The tech companies, interestingly, come out on top. Oil and gas, um, just at the bottom, um, very suspicious of some of the things that they do. And lots, you know, not any, there are very few people getting a majority rating them as brilliant on everything. We are pretty, we are a sceptical bunch. Uh, and the other thing is the sort of differences for different sectors. So public services, are, you know, are well-intentioned, more likely to be seen as well-intentioned than not. But banks, obviously quite competent, uh, but not necessarily well-intentioned. 38% uh, globally disagree with that. Pub banks actually might have quite good managers who are extracting cash from us. The public sector might be a bit less competent, but they're better intentioned. So again, the, the key factors sort of vary from place to place. And finally, then, all I'd say, uh, before we go on to some discussion from some much more learned people than me, there is a problem. Uh, but I think the point, what we need to get away from is a narrative that Brexit, Trump, the populism are all due to a massive collapse in trust uh, that has happened recently. Uh, it is not, that is not true. We have been in this situation for some time. It's certainly complicated, and it depends on the sector and what you're trying to do. If you're in supermarkets, you're going to be trusted, and if you're in government, uh, there is suspicion. Uh, one of my colleagues in this room was once hired by Number 10 under a previous regime to try and find out how we, what, what would make people like government more. And um, he went away, he did all sorts of semiotic analysis, um, you know, we looked at all of the data, and the report came back that, well, civil servants are quite, you know, as we know, are quite trusted, but the problem is politicians. So it does, it does depend. And finally, I think, if I leave you with nothing else, the world isn't going to hell in a handcart. Um, and and some, in sometimes, in some places, things are actually getting better. The end. Thank you. Thank you.